So we know that the market is quite volatile, but as we all have come to understand, bear markets don't last forever and neither do bull markets. So today I wanna to talk to you about options as we get head first into the upcoming bull market, which could be 2024, 2025, and the different options that are available to you. So uh, without further ado, I'm gonna bring in uh, two people, Kevin Maloney from uh, iTrust and Joe Endoso from Link2. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. Hi, Rob. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you, Rob. Absolutely. So, like, so Kevin, when you guys started to do, started to work with uh, Link2, I was kind of uh, a little bit hesitant because I don't like change because I'm, I'm getting a little bit older in my ways. But when I took a look at it, I thought to myself, this could be something that could do very well for people coming up into these uh, bull markets. So, Joe, I'm going to start with you. And the questions that we have are pretty simple. First of all, uh, what is Link2 and why the partnership with iTrust? And we'll talk about the current offerings. I know that you guys did pre-IPO Coinbase and how that worked out. And then uh, also, what are the future plans? So first things first, Joe, what is Link2? Why should we take a real deep look into it and what's happening behind the scenes? So we're a private investing platform that offers the ability of regular to regular individuals, people like you and me, Rob, the ability to systematically access the best investment opportunities in the private tech investing space. So these are basically the best tech companies in the world while they're still private being made available so you can invest in them before they do their IPO or have a liquidity event in, in, in the broad market. Um, that's an important distinction because historically that's that kind of investing, investing in the private market has been the best asset in terms of performance, in terms of investment returns in the last 30 years. You know, it's not a secret, right? If you look at the big public market um, indices like the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ to see how weighted they are towards technology companies. Technology companies will make up roughly 40% of the total value of that public market. So it's no secret in the public market that that, that, that sector and the companies that make it up represent, you know, the best, most um, uh, exciting investment opportunities. But here's what's hard to do. It's easy to go on your brokerage platform today and invest in Amazon and Google and Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. But what if you had the opportunity to invest in those companies before they went public at a price that was a lot lower than we, where they were when they IPO'd and afterwards? That's in a very simple way of describing what our value proposition is. We yeah. give you the ability to come and you can do it in a really simple, easy way because we're, we're tech enabled. So it's a very click to invest experience. It's sort of like investing in crypto or investing in, on Robinhood and stocks, but it's in private company equities. And you can do it for as little as 2,500 bucks for your first investment. And after that, the investment minimum is no more than 5,000 bucks. Okay. That is super low. And there's no other private investing platform where you can do that. So, okay, there's so much to unpack here. And the reason why I was, when I first read through this and I was excited is because I remember in 2021 when everybody was going through the massive bull run. We all remember those days. They were fantastic days. And then when we started to see these fantastic gains come about, there's a lot of people, they were talking about, you know, I, if I take these gains, now I'm stuck in this, this ugly, dirty fiat. And, you know, with, with inflation, who knows where things are going to go and the government. And, and, of course, the next question that I would get was, well, you know, what are the alternatives to investment? Now, I can't tell people what to invest in. I'm not a financial advisor, obviously. But when I took a look at this, I thought to myself, well, as time comes on, this could just be one more option. People like real estate, people like precious metals. And then there's another option here that we could take a look at as things move forward so I can totally understand it. The, but one thing you said, though, and I think people's ears perked up, Joe, when you said there's a price and the price was 2500 5000 who is this available for? Because these are securities, correct? They are. And uh, as a result of that, we're a securities firm and licensed as such because we couldn't do this otherwise. Um, but having said that, 
they're open to individuals uh, also, not just institutions. I mean, institutions have traditionally been pretty much the only ones that have actively invested in this space. But what we're doing is opening it up to individuals. You still have to be an accredited investor in the U.S. And if you're in a foreign country and about 15 percent of our customers are overseas, um, you've got to uh, abide by whatever the local regs are in your country. And some countries have similar types of regulations. So it's not open to just about everybody, but it's op- but it, it certainly covers a lot, right? If you looked at the states, give you some, a number, Rob, there's about 25 million uh, people who are accredited investors. Gotcha. So if you look at it totally, it's about 75, 80 million globally. It's, uh, people doing some people are doing pretty good. And then just as a, just as a refresher, if I, my mind serves, uh, you for being a credit investor, if it's still in the United States, uh, 200,000 for a single person uh, per year or 300,000 uh, if you're married, I think it's uh, up to a million or a million dollars plus for uh, the amount of uh, revenue that you get or the assets that you own per year. Is that what an accredited investor still is in America? Or are we different now? Yeah, you, you got to have, if you're an individual, you got to have income that exceeds 200000 for the last two years. Two years. And uh, obviously in the current year. Um, and or you can have a net worth that is a million dollars, not counting the value of your home. Really? Gotcha. Okay, so everybody, that would be something for uh, you guys to uh, understand. And that'll be for you. Now, before we get into the current offerings and the track record, Kevin, Mr. Maloney. CEO of iTrust. So how did you guys start to talk about this? And I know that there's been some emails coming out. So what is your guys' role with iTrust with Link2? Yeah, thanks again, Rob, for having us. Um, so we came across Joe and Link2 over the last couple of years. We've been in touch. We've had multiple meetings. We've been friendly. We've uh, seen each other at the various uh, digital asset events. And we went out to our 200,000 accounts, 200,000 clients that have signed up for iTrust Capital. About 45,000 of them are active in funding accounts. And we do surveys twice a year. And we know that we have clients that found us because they want access to uh, you know, digital IRAs. And in our survey that we do a couple of times a year, we got feedback that they want certain coins. They want certain other alternatives listed um, as accessible through their IRA. And uh, because we had a great relationship with Link2, we've watched them execute. Uh, they were very transparent about their strengths and weaknesses. Uh, they're a, a you know, registered broker dealer. I like the way that they are compliant. They follow the rules. They're working with accredited investors and, and they are very clear and transparent about the risk. And that's really important, especially in this market, but it's, it's really important if you're regulated. And so we kept in touch and we connected earlier this year and Joe had approached us with some ideas. We said, hey, this is interesting. You guys have clients that want private equity uh, and potential access to IRAs. We have clients with IRAs that want access to private equity deals. You guys have vetted these deals. You know that they are. there's plenty of risk. Obviously, we all need to do our own due diligence. And we came to an agreement and said, look, let's uh, let's put iTrust Capital on there. Let's see if we can further integrate and get our platform integrated with yours and see if our clients would want access to your uh, deals and and vice versa. So it's something that we've been talking about for a couple of years. We started to dive into earlier this year and uh, and and exploring with a test right now, uh, real time. And we want to further integrate down the road again because our clients are asking for alternative real estate uh, products that are generating yield and access to private equity. So that that's kind of the big picture. And uh, you know we have to be really careful. Uh, again, we're, it, these are self-directed IRAs, so it's always up to our clients to make their own decisions. But you know we we they're not all successes, right? They're not all home runs, and we have to be careful about who we align with. We need to make sure the moral compass is pointing north and that we've all got integrity and um, uh, safety, security and, and, and compliance at, at the top of the at the top of the uh, uh, list. And, and Joe and his team seemed very um, uh, ready and able to uh, deliver um, transparency and and uh, have not um, are, are not willing to you know skirt any of the rules, which is critical to us. So. That, that's how we got alignment there. Gotcha. So when you're talking, when you guys are both talking about that, and thanks for the answers, I appreciate it. 
is there a way for us to do to pull a Peter Thiel? And what I'm talking about is, is Peter Thiel was able to do a, a, have a massive return as he puts uh, shares of PayPal into his Roth IRA. And as, as I think he's almost ready to take it out. He hasn't been able to take it out of his, of his IRA now tax-free. So in this situation, I trust and, and link to, is that a possibility or that's not a possibility? It's an absolute, uh, not just a possibility, but it's something you can actually do today. And mm -hmm. it's the singular reason why we wanted to partner up. Uh, with iTrust, um, and not only that, we we we, we liked iTrust so much we have we've actually invested in them, and encourage our community to participate in that investment. The reason is very simple, right? If you if the premise is that everybody that's an individual like those of us on this call should try to mirror what the smart money is doing, then what the smart money is doing is. A, it's significantly allocating portfolio to alternative assets. That's number one. You look at, at university endowments, pension funds, hedge funds, um, all the big money, all the smart money have allocated to uh, alternative assets to the tune of anywhere from 25 to 50 percent of their portfolio, depending on which institution you're speaking about. Those are allocations that are well above what the individual is doing today. So the individual is behind and lagging and needs to allocate more to alternatives to mirror what the institutions are doing. That's point number one, Rob. Point number two is when you look at the range of alternative investments you can make, the best performing investment asset class amongst alternatives in the last 30 years has been, guess what? Venture capital investment into private tech companies. That's what we're offering our members the opportunity to make. So you can be in the best performing asset class within that alternative span. Mm -hmm. That asset class and everything else and all, but that asset class particularly is driven by capital gains kinds of returns. So it's super important if you want tax efficiency to have an instrument that you can invest with that is tax efficient. And that's where the IRAs come in. So it was always part of our strategic plan to have some form of integration and partnership with a, with a very compliant tech enabled IRA provider. So we could help our customers get tax efficient treatment for those capital gains on their private investments. And the iTrust guys absolutely checked all the boxes for us. Gotcha. Well, okay. Excellent explanation. And for those who don't know the story, uh, Peter Thiel, he socked away a lot of his, uh, his PayPal shares when they were worth uh, not much at all. And then watch it appreciate as he put into Roth IRA and now he's going to be able to take it out for a massive amount of gains. And if you're looking for uh, the story in the video itself, there's going to be a link in the description. You also find it right here. All right. So with that, with that being said, let's go on to a second piece, which is the current offerings and the track record. Let's be honest, gentlemen. Uh, nobody's perfect. We've had some hits. We have we had some misses. Uh, so, uh, Joe, Kevin, you want to chime in at some point too, and just to talk about it. But uh, we'll start with Joe and Link too. Hits and misses. So you talked about Coinbase, Joe. What else you got? So we've had six successful exits in the last IPO window, and uh, those were Coinbase, mm -hmm. Robinhood, Marketa, SoFi, Novium, mm -hmm. and Nerd Wallet. And if you rank them in terms of returns, the best return, by the way, was Coinbase. That was about nine and a half X in a period of roughly 14 months. And the worst performing was a roughly 1.2 X in a period of about nine months. Right. So all of those perform better than market. And obviously Coinbase was a whopper. Wow. Um, so I and and I think that's also another, uh, you know, another point that would be interesting, particularly to your audience, Rob, is that the Coinbase um, investment, which is the very first digital asset company to ever go public, by the way, was not happenstance for us. We, we have a uh, very long term and positive view about blockchain technology and the companies operating in that space. And so even though we've made over 70 investments so far in our portfolio, a significant number of those, approximately 16, I believe, have been in the digital asset space. 
And so even though Coinbase is now public and no longer in our portfolio because they've exited, we have today names like Ripple, Circle, Kraken, Chainalysis, Block Demon, BitPay, Uphold, PolySign, Figment, Dapper Labs, uh, wow. Copper, Alchemy, Doom Analytics. Check out our platform if you're interested, but you will find if you're a believer in that space, uh, very, very high quality companies available for investment. Um, we've also made available lots of uh, and a growing number of portfolio companies in, in, in generative AI in uh, space tech and space technology uh, in, uh, in, and we just closed a couple of days ago, our very first uh, investment in a quantum computing company. Interesting. Interesting, Joe. So that's great. We got a, that's a pretty darn good track record, I must say, but for all the, uh, for all the goodness, we're not going to hit them all right. VCs, the ones that I've talked to say it's a, it, it's a great idea but we can't be winners all the time. So Joe, which ones have not been like the greatest that have come? Well, out? the worst one, the worst investment we made was actually also in the digital asset space, Rob, and that That's was BlockFi. Too. BlockFi, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a complete zero. Um, I, you know, and all I can say is that we, we did our due diligence, uh, but we, the one thing we, we did not uh, see and, and um, discern was, how exposed they were systematically to uh, hedge funds that had exposure to the whole uh, Luna Terra meltdown. Terra. And um, so, you know, that that was a, a fatal blow to BlockFi. Um, I think the good news for our members is that the amount of money that our members collectively lost on that investment was only about one fifth one fifth the amount that we lost. So the thing about just backing away a little bit, the thing that is also unique about Link2, right, is that we actually take risk on all of our portfolio companies. We actually make these investments using our own money, our own capital, before any of our investors actually participate in them. So we hold risk across the entire book. And that is very different than every other investing platform which is, they're, they're purely brokerages. We are a brokerage, but we're also a principal. So there will never be a situation where our customers lose money and we don't. <laughs> In the case of BlockFi, we lost 5X what our customers did, right? So we win with our customers, we win together with them, but we lose with them as well. Yeah, I got it. And so thank you for sharing that because it's very hard for, you know, we can talk about the winners all day long, but you got to, you know, say, hey, you know what? We're not perfect. And just to just to speak on that, you know, talking about losing money on this channel, we talked a lot about a lot of projects. And uh, two of the big regrets that I have personally is talking about Voyager and Celsius. And because of those two platforms, uh, a lot of my funds, six figures on Celsius, close to six figures on Voyager was locked up. Now with Voyager, we get 35 percent back. Celsius, who knows where that, that's going to go. And I will say, I will give you kudos because before we talked, you said that, you know, when you guys did your due diligence on not only Celsius, but FTX, you said there is no way this is going to work. So Joe, uh, you know, good job on that one. Just smelling it out. As you call it, didn't pass the smell test. Yeah. And, you know, for a while there, we looked like we were not very smart and, you know, not going with the flow. But I think in the long run, it proved, uh, you know, I'm, I'm old enough to know that, it, you know, in, in, in this business, right, sometimes the best deals you do are the ones that you don't. That's a, I'm going to steal that from you, Joe. That's a good one. The best deals you do are the ones that you don't. Kevin, be, before we move on, uh, as far as future plans, just real quick, how's iTrust doing? Hits and misses. What's going on over there? Uh, good. Yeah. I mean, we're cranking along and, and uh, we're excited about this partnership for a, a bunch of reasons. A, it brought Link2 onto our uh, cap table. They made an investment, which is, uh, as you as as you heard from Joe, really important. They put intellectual and financial capital or skin into the game. And they spent a lot of time with visits and due diligence on the platform. They saw us grow. Uh, they saw us hunker down over the last 18 months. I mean, we had to make some di difficult decisions uh, and really curtail our spending um, coming from 21 into 22, even after a large capital raise. So we were the beneficiaries of a, of a, a terrific Series A 
uh, amount of capital and a very large valuation. And that is like oxygen. If you get too much, you can get a little bit giddy. And if you don't have a little un enough, you can die on the vine, right? It's about managing uh, and, and treating that uh, carefully. And we treated every dollar like it was our own. We made very difficult cuts. We had to cut really smart people. We had to cut back on office space, uh, personnel, equipment, um, marketing significantly. And uh, it was tough. It was really tough. We had to clean up some things on aisles 9, 10, 11, and 12, right? We had some spillage here and there. And we got through that. Uh, we got through that as a team. We were lean, focused, and disciplined. We knew our strengths and weaknesses. We relied on partners to do what they, they do best. And, and, um, and we got we got through it. We built uh, the trust of our uh, rebuilt trust with our, our board. We had a lot of support from our board and we were very transparent to our you know 200,000 accounts that have signed up, 45,000 active users. And by the way, if you think you're amazing at everything, all you have to do is go look at your ratings every day, because if you're in the retail business, um, people are pretty vocal, even if it's affecting 10 or 12 people, a very small audience. You can't hide that. And so we look every day at, at the ratings and we respond accordingly. And I think Joe having access to our financials and our lean disciplined approach and us getting back to break even and then getting back to profitability. Um, I think he saw that we were an open book, that we were open, honest, ethical and coachable people trying to always do the right thing for our clients, trying to give them the best service, pick up the phone, answer their emails in times of of stress um, or strain or, or anytime there's been glitches. And certainly we've been, uh, they've been the recipient of, of plenty with the technology platform, but we got through those things with a lot of transparency and we come out stronger and Joe got to see that. You really can't hide your idiosyncrasies in a tough market. Everybody looks like a rock star or um, a hero in a really good market. Um, but we've, we've had some, uh, some challenges ourselves. We were fortunate enough to avoid uh, partnerships with some of the big losers. We've been approached by five or six of the big names that we can all think of that have uh, had, um, you know, uh, certain demise, you know, certain you know, demise uh, in their in their trajectory. And not that we were smart or brilliant or better than anybody else. We just something didn't make sense. Something didn't add up, or it seemed a little bit too risky. And with a compliance background, I and our team have spent a lot of time and money with legal counsel trying to do the right thing. And if you have a moral compass and culture that is innate, the DNA from the ground up from inception is about compliance and doing the right thing. It's not hard to shift and move and, and adjust. And and I think Joe and others got to see that. We're excited we're on the platform. It's a pretty phenomenal list of names uh, that he was able to get into also. And uh, they don't all work out, of course, but um, we were proud to have them as investors and see uh, what the appetite is for our team and then further integrate. Uh, at some point, we'd like it to be a few clicks on our end also and allow our clients to self-direct and participate uh, into private equity deals and real estate and other things we're looking at. Uh, in through their IRAs. And uh, our job is not to prescribe, right? We want to remove barriers, inspire, and provide access. And so while we're not going to prescribe and tell people what to do because we don't have a sales team, we don't uh, pay commissions, we're not a broker dealer, we don't make recommendations, we don't want to prescribe. We want to provide access to really good partners and have people and remind them to do their own due diligence and then participate and and, 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 and go as they, as they desire. Don't bet the farm, but a lot of people are crypto curious and they're curious about alternatives and they wanna participate. If they can do it in an IRA, we think it's a phenomenal platform and they should take advantage of the, of the tax benefits. Um, you know, and, and there are some benefits that everybody should explore with their, with their tax advisors um, that you can take advantage of. I certainly hope uh, some of us on the, on the call today uh, can get to a place, even a fraction of what Peter Thiel had in his IRA, but um, it worked. It was, uh, it was, it was amazing. And that's um, one of the asset classes that really intrigued us is the private equity. There's a lot of potential for growth, plenty of failures we know, but there's a lot of potential for growth and you got to dive through and do your own due diligence. But I will say Joe and his team, I mean, they, they dive in, they're doing due diligence and they're trying to weed out uh, bad actors and, and business models that may not work. 
there is one more there is one more thing I'd like to add out of that piece, which is we've all gone through this this brutal bear market so far. And just like Warren Buffett talks about, you can see who's swimming naked when the tide rolls out. And I, I always say this, pay attention to those who are building and thriving in the bear because they will crush it in the bull. So for this and this information that you at home are watching, just take this and just see if this is actually something for you. Because I got to tell you, bull markets or bear markets don't last forever. And bull markets as the same thing. So gents, this will be the last one. And Kevin, you pretty much talked about a little bit about this alternative investments, but future plans and how to find out more information. So I'll, cause anything else you want to add, Kevin, besides that, the alternative investments, I know you talked about uh, real estate, you guys already have uh, precious metals and of course, yeah. and now with link to, but anything else? Yeah. So we've got you know, digital assets. We just added five in the last two weeks. We listened to our clients. Uh, several clients recommended uh, certain coins once they pass our sniff test. Again, we don't recommend it, but we have to make sure that, you know, these are uh, generally uh, have potential. Um, uh, so we looked at uh, adding five assets, which we checked the box on. We talked about private equity, which we're checking the box on with link to. But we are currently engaged with a few uh, groups on alternatives such as real estate and debt that can drive uh, some what looks to be pretty attractive yield. Um, and look, with 200,000 accounts and 45,000 active users and 2 billion, roughly 2 billion in assets and nearly 8 billion or 7.5 billion in transactions, you know, we're starting to become a, a force, a, a small force of nature. And we want to listen and iterate quickly based on feedback from those surveys we do with our clients. They're pretty transparent uh, about what they want. And so we're listening. And we're looking at launching cash accounts also so that you can have one dashboard with a qualified custodian as a wrapper, uh, which where assets are held off balance sheet where you can log in and and, you know, uh, deposit your funds and, and treat it like a taxable you know, cash account from our transactional platform. All of the liquidity and trading and settlement and qualified custody and um, institutional cold wallet custody happens with third party you know, providers that are. Um, regulated and institutional quality. And we are, again, the software dashboard that allows people to um, guide uh, their dollars where they want to go. And we want to continue, as I mentioned earlier, remove those barriers, inspire them to participate and make their own decisions. And this is uh, right along with what we've talked about and linked to and the list of names they have. We're, we're happy to be part of that platform. Excellent. All right, Kevin, thank you. And Joe, we'll finish off with you. What do we have as far as future plans? Because we, we touch a lot. And of course, this is new to us and, and my subscribers. But where do you see things going in the next uh, year, two, five or so? We're just going to continue growing. You know, we launched this platform back in uh, February of 2020, Rob. And since then, we've uh, achieved close to $260 million in cumulative investment by our members on the platform across 70 plus, you know, private tech companies. So we're just going to continue to scale. Um, our revenues have grown tremendously year on year. We're going to look to do conservatively 60 million or so this year in top line. And we've always been cash flow positive and profitable from, from the first year we, we launched. So, you know, we've been, we've been super lucky in that respect. So it's just a matter of continuing to scale. I'd like to see our international component grow. I know you have many listeners that are overseas. And let me emphasize again that we are a, a global investment platform, meaning regardless of what country in the world you're in, you can participate as long as you comply with your country's securities regulations. And we check that box as part of the onboarding process to make sure that you, know, you as an individual are compliant in your, in your home jurisdiction. And uh, once you're set up and onboarded, you're basically it's a click to invest. Very simple, very easy transaction experience. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Stick with stick with what you're good at. And it looks like it's, you're pretty darn good at what you're doing, Joe and Kevin. So, gentlemen, thanks for coming on. Uh, if you want to find out more information, there is a link in the description. It looks just like this. And you know what that I trust is a sponsor of the channel and there are affiliate links here. So if you cannot stand to use affiliate links, you don't have to. You can go right to itrustcapital.com or you can go right to link2.com. However, if you do that, you'll miss out on the $500 sign-up bonus when you go to link2 with the link in the description. And that'll do it for today. So 
Uh, gents, I got to say, thanks for coming on. This will be a continuing discussion. So I'll have you guys on back again. Cause I'd like to see, uh, well, of course, Kevin, how things are going with iTrust and what you guys are doing new, but then Joe, I'd like to see like, you know, how the things that you guys are investing into, uh, the ripples of the world, how things are moving, moving and moving forward. So that's it for today. Anything else before we take off gents? No, thank you, Rob. I appreciate your time. Uh, and always uh, look forward to the insights and the comments from your viewers. Um, I know you have a lot of options to talk to people. It's, uh, it's, it's great to get in, in your schedule. And I look forward to the next conversation around innovation and sort of what's next and talk a little bit about the, you know, global and, um, you know, macroeconomics factors that are affecting and people's sort of sentiment at this time. And, and we can do a little speculation also. Absolutely. We can do that. And of course, my subscribers will have money, many, many comments. All right. So that's it for today. So everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. Appreciate it. Like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe. But that's it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by. And we'll see you on the next one.